Computer, go to my lessons. Um, computer, type my name. Ugh, computer, do something. Anything? We learned in the last lesson that if you want to know what a computer is doing, you need to connect an output device to it. The problem is, output devices only output data. If I want to tell this computer what to do, I also need to input commands using an input device. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain three ways that users can input commands and data into modern computers and identify five examples of modern input devices. Let's get into it. If you don't tell a computer what to do, it will just kind of sit there doing nothing. At most, the computer will continue following the last command it did receive. If you start watching a video and then disconnect your mouse and keyboard, the computer won't freeze up. It will just keep playing the video because that was the last thing you told it to do. If you want to tell it to do something else, like stop playing the video, you'd need to reconnect the mouse or keyboard first. So, what exactly is an input device? An input device is a piece of hardware that takes information from outside the computer and sends it into the computer in the form of data. Input devices are essentially the senses of a computer. In fact, lots of input devices are actually called sensors. Think about what sends information about the world around you to your brain. Pause the video and answer this question in your guided notes. What sensors do you have on your body? I have eyes, which take in visual information, like a camera. I have ears, which take in audio information, like a microphone. And I have skin, a nose, and taste buds, which are unlike anything a computer has. Let's switch the question around. After all, this lesson isn't about your sensory organs, it's about a computer's input devices. Pause the video and answer this question in your guided notes. What hardware is connected to your computer or device that allows you to tell it what to do? You probably used an input device just now to pause and then unpause this video. Maybe you clicked a mouse or Maybe you pressed a key on a keyboard. If you're on a tablet or phone, maybe you touched a touch screen. You could even be watching this on a game console and you pause the video by pressing a button on the controller. These are all input devices and there are so many more out there. Let's explore some common and not so common input devices. Remember, computers started out as mechanical devices where data had to be entered through physical means. And that history of inputting data physically still affects how we control computers today. Remember what the original input device was? How did we tell the original computers what to do? Punched cards. With all the things we use modern computers for, we should probably be glad punched cards aren't used anymore. That would be a lot of hole punching. Oof. Still, the most common methods of inputting data into computers to this day are physical methods. The most common type of input device today is the keyboard. Most data that gets input into computers is text data. You know, numbers and letters and symbols. Keyboards make it super easy to enter text, so most computing devices either have some form of keyboard built in or make it really easy to connect one. Another common input device is the mouse. Ever since the first computer mouse was demonstrated in 1968, mice have evolved a lot over the years, but the general design is still the same. A sensor detects what direction the mouse moves and moves the on-screen cursor in the same direction and you can click buttons on the mouse to do different things. We usually see mice operated by hand, but there are also mice that are operated by foot, so anybody that can't use a hand mouse 
is still able to operate computers. A lot of computers today have built-in pads that allow you to use your finger as the mouse. These are known as track pads because they track your finger. You can even get an external trackpad to connect to a computer that doesn't have one built in, just like you would connect a mouse. Mice and trackpads are mainly only used on desktop and laptop computers. Why wouldn't you really need a mouse or trackpad with modern computing devices like smartphones and tablets? Because they have touch screens. Touch screens are an interesting combination of input and output device. The screen shows you what the device is doing, and you can touch directly on the screen to control it. Some touch screens require you to use your finger, and others require a stylus. That's like a pen, specifically made for a touch screen. Some touch screens let you use either your finger or a stylus. As a bonus, you don't really need a keyboard with touch screen devices either because you can pull up a virtual keyboard on the screen and type on that with your fingers or stylus. Aren't touch screens cool? Not all input devices input physical data though. Audio input devices allow you to input sounds as data. Most modern computers have a built-in microphone or you can connect an external mic. You can use a microphone to record any sounds around you. Even cooler than that is that some devices with microphones can be fully controlled using voice commands. Watch this. Hey tablet, what's the weather like today? Ooh, I'm glad I brought a jacket. Some computers even use artificial intelligence programs to respond back to you as if you're having a conversation with the device. We call these virtual assistants, and they were one of the biggest innovations with modern smartphones. There are also optical input devices, which turn images into data inside the computer. The most obvious one is a camera. You can hook up a camera or a webcam to the computer and have it take pictures or videos. Then you can either save that visual data or send it over the internet to somebody else. Another common visual input device is a scanner. It takes a picture of whatever is on it and inputs a digital copy into your computer so that you can edit it, save it, or send it to somebody. In stores and other businesses, special scanners are used which read a barcode in order to bring up data about specific items and keep track of inventory. There are even special visual input devices that allow you to control a computer completely with your eyes. Eye trackers use a camera sensor to track exactly where on a screen your eyes are looking and to click you either stare at the thing you want to click on or use special blinks or winks. Game controllers are especially interesting input devices. Each console has specific controllers that only work with that console because each controller has completely different input types on it. Different consoles use different combinations of joysticks, buttons, touchpads, gyroscope sensors, motion sensors, cameras, microphones. They really throw everything they can think of into those things. That's why I'm excited to see what types of input devices are invented in the future. New ways to play games! If you take anything away from this lesson, let it be that there are a huge variety of ways to interact with computers. Everybody is different and everybody can choose the way they prefer to use computers, whether that be with a hand mouse and keyboard, a touch screen, an eye tracker, a microphone, or any of the other types of input devices I've shown you. In the next lesson, we'll learn about the motherboard, which is often considered to be the backbone of the computer, and where we'll find the computer's brain. In other words, the motherboard is where the actual computing in a computer happens. This lesson is definitely the most important one in this unit, so make sure to pay close attention. And as always, remember, your brain is the smartest computer in the world, so keep it charged and never stop updating it. See you next time! Hey, hey.